Before you're seated, just turn around to the people beside you, around you. Give them a big, uh, you know, wave or a high five or uh, air hug, whatever. I know we can't we can't hug each other yet, but uh, we could do it uh, remotely. <laughs> Amen. Well, uh, good afternoon, champions. Good to see all of you. Those of you watching us online, we thank God for you and. Uh, you know, uh, let us know where you are watching from. Uh, just put it on the chat and we'll be happy to connect with you. Uh, for those of you visiting with us today, thank you for coming, being a part of our worship. We're just enjoying in the presence of God today. Amen. What a wonderful time we're having in, in God's presence. Well, uh, friends, I, I trust that you are all doing well. Um, you know, these days we're living through very difficult times. These are difficult days. Um, you know, it's been over a year. It's almost 18 months, I think, uh, that we have been in the pandemic and it's not over yet. You know, yes, there are some restrictions that are being lifted and things like that. But, you know, this is now almost two years already. Uh, it'll be probably the second Christmas that we will have that we're still in the pandemic. Uh, yes, there's some things that have been uh, loosened up, but uh, we are still going through difficult times and uh, many people have been affected by this. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who've gone through some health issues, uh, you know, business closures. Uh, some even have gone through a lot of stress and everything. And uh, that's why some people have gone through even uh, mental health issues. And so even the Globe and Mail, the article in the Globe and Mail headline says this. It says, uh, they're going to put it up there, Gen Z and millennials playing a significant part in the great resignation trend. Now, there's a great resignation going on. I don't know if you're aware of that. This phenomena of the great resignation is about masses of people leaving their jobs. And this is happening because people have experienced the uncertainty, uh, you know, of lockdowns and everything in the past 18 months. And they don't want to go back to the old normal anymore. They don't want to go to do that. And, and they have experienced a lot of stress. So they take the risk again and, and resign from their jobs. And so, so many people are doing that now. Friends, we go through circumstances in our lives uh, that sometimes paralyzes us and we seem to be helpless and hopeless uh, thank god for people who help us thank god for people who are there who support us and help us and uh, people like the church and life groups you know uh, our support groups they're there to help us to be able to help us to overcome no, today, friends, I, I want to talk about faith to overcome. You know, we can find encouragement in the Word of God today um, on how we can have faith to overcome our circumstances, whatever that may be. So I'd like you to turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 5 to 13. It says this, When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. And Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. But just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west. And will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go, let it be done just as you believed it would. 
And his servant was healed at that moment. Well, God bless his word. Now that's a, a miracle that just happened. And, uh, you know, it's a, an amazing passage of scripture that gives encouragement to us. And I trust that uh, this word today will help us and encourage us to have that faith to overcome in our lives. That at the end of this message, if there's anything that we're going through, we will find it in us to be able to increase in our faith, to be able to move forward and overcome our situation. In our passage today, a centurion went to ask Jesus for help. You know, a, a centurion is a, uh, an officer in the Roman army uh, that is like a captain, and he, is, he has about 100 people under him. We find that the centurion had a servant who was paralyzed and was suffering. Um, a servant can also be viewed as a member of their household. You know, so, someone who is paralyzed, by the way, is practically helpless and hopeless, especially in those times. You know, there were no high-tech gadgets. They didn't have those kind of facilities that would allow people to be able to uh, 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 get around at, with their disability. Obviously, that person could not go anywhere to get some help. See, not only was the person paralyzed, but this person was suffering. Now, but the centurion learned that Jesus was in Capernaum. Now, and, and he sees the opportunity to seek help. Now, that is a very important principle. I want you to hear me very well, those of you watching. When you are in trouble, where do you get help? Who do you go to to get help? You know, a lot of people, they would go to their neighbor, go to their friends, go to whoever, you know, and, and, and try to get help. And some of them will not even you know, get help anywhere and just try to overcome it themselves. They try to, you know, just work it out in their life and somehow maybe they'll be able to get through it without anybody's help. See, but that's, in, uh, that's in a very important principle here of when, when we need to overcome. The first principle is this, recognize who Jesus is. You know, the centurion knew where to get help. You know, even though he is a man of stature, he still went to get help. He's a man with a position already. I mean, this man is already a captain, uh, you know, and commanding 100 people under him. Uh, but even at that stature in life, you know, uh, he still needed to get help. In fact, he, he could even afford a servant, right? So he's a man of stature. But still... He went to go and get help. The challenge that we have today, right, is many people do not recognize Jesus' authority over their lives. They don't. In fact, they just add Jesus into their busy schedule. <laughs> they still go about doing their own thing and then, you know, perhaps just add Jesus and and uh, still their life is busy. Still they do their own thing. And, and Jesus is just a, a, a label that they have. That, oh, they're a Christian. But he is not Lord of their lives. Yeah. All right? Now, the sad thing is even among Christians. People call, them, call ourselves Christians. Uh, but Jesus is not our Lord. Now, he may be our Savior. Oh, you know, they would declare that, yes, true enough, Jesus is, is our Savior. He forgave our sins. He, he, he gave us eternal life. But He is not Lord of their life. Because they can still do whatever they want to do with their life. They're not looking to Jesus for the solution in their lives. Um, they go through problems, yes. They go to challenges. They go through the trials. They go through all of those things. But they will try to overcome it by themselves. In fact, 
You know, they, they, they don't really need Jesus in their lives to try and solve their problem. Maybe if they could just work harder, maybe they could just earn more money. You know, maybe if, you know, uh, the COVID will be over, they'll, they'll just be able to overcome it. Right? So, so the, the, the first thing that they will do is cut church. You know, I always say this before. And as a spiritual dad in the house, let me just remind everybody and just encourage you that when you're going through trouble, when you're going through problems, church is not the one that you give up. Are you hearing me? Because I've seen this a lot of times. People, they have a marital problem, they don't go to church. They have a financial problem, they don't go to church. They have a relationship problem, they don't go to church. They lost a job, they don't go to church. I mean, as if the church is the problem. You see, you know, that's not what we need to do. We need to, we don't run away from Jesus. We run to Jesus. When we're, yes, go ahead, give him praise. He's worthy. When we go through problems in our life, when we go through issues in our life, we need to run to him. Recognize who Jesus is, is in your life. You see, the centurion knew who Jesus was. He called him Lord. Now this is, this is a Gentile calling him Lord. And if you look at the original uh, language in the original uh, Greek word for Lord, he used the term that was a title used for deity or divine being, a supreme being. He addressed Jesus as owner. One who possesses authority and supreme above all things. Wow. See, it is not easy for a Roman officer to get help from a Jew. <laughs> Especially in those days where the Roman Empire was, was the one ruling that government. But he obviously heard about Jesus. That he healed the sick and performed miracles. So he humbled himself to go to him. Then it takes a lot of humility <laughs> to go and get help. Are you hearing me today? <laughs> Amen? But you see, he went and get help. He humbled himself. Why? Because Jesus not only healed the sick, but he also transformed lives. Yeah. Jesus, friends, who rose from the dead, he healed the sick, the blind man see, the lame walk, the deaf here, he is the God of miracles. And the great thing about it is that he is willing to help. Imagine the, the, the God of the universe. I mean, the, the, the one who created everything in this world, the one who can perform miracles, the one who rose from the dead would have time to help. Now, you and I know what it's like to help people. A lot of you are really great people. I'm sure you love to help people. But there comes times when you feel like you're interrupted, right? <laughs> you know, you're, you want to go somewhere and then somebody needs help. It's like, oh. You know, I know I feel like you feel like interrupted sometimes. That you want to help, but there's an interruption. You know, and uh, but to Jesus... It wasn't an interruption, even though he was going in a certain direction. And then all of a sudden, the centurion needs help. He was willing to stop, turn around, and go to where he needed help. And that's the way Jesus is. He's willing to help. Tell to the person beside you, he's willing to help you. He's willing to help you, those of you watching online. <laughs> See, friends, he, he asked the centurion, shall I come and heal him? I will personally go. You know, he emphasized the word I there. I, I will be the one. Because in the Jewish law, it prevents Jews to enter the homes of a Gentile. So, that would have been a problem, you know, for a Jew to go to the Gentile's house. But here was Jesus. It didn't matter to him. So that's why he said, you want me to come? I'll go. Yet Jesus is willing to help. And we know that just a few verses before this. Now, we didn't read it today. 
But you will see that just before you, a few verses before our passage today, there was a, a leper who, who needed help, who wanted to get healed of his sickness. You know, because, you know, leprosy, right? Uh, and, and, and he asked Jesus if Jesus is willing to make him clean, to help him. And Jesus says, yes, I'm willing. And so Jesus spoke the word, be clean. And all of a sudden, miraculously, he was clean. So friends, Jesus is willing to help you. That's the first thing you got to understand. Recognize who Jesus is in your life. He's there for you. He's not against you. He's not there to condemn you. In fact, the Bible says that he has come uh, in this world, you know, to, to save those who, who are lost and uh, to seek them and, and save those who are lost. I mean, he came in this world not to condemn, but to save. And so, friends, he's here to help us. There's nothing too difficult for our Lord. Now, you may be thinking, oh, you don't know, Pastor, you don't know my situation. Yeah, I, I don't know your situation, but God does. He knows your situation. He, he can heal you of your physical sickness. He is also the healer of your soul. He can heal the deepest hurts and disappointments that you may have, that you may be going through. He can heal that. Recognize that Jesus is your healer, he's your redeemer, and he's your deliverer. Amen. There is no one like him. Yeah. No. Now here's what Paul says about Jesus. And he described Jesus in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 to 18. Here's what he says. He says about Jesus, the son is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things, say all. all. See, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. Wow. See, friend, the question, you know, having read that, you know who Jesus is, knowing his power of who Jesus is, the question is, who is Jesus to you? Who is he to you? Is he Lord of your life, or he's just someone that, you know, you can identify with, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. You know, I know Jesus. I know about Jesus. Or do you really know him that you recognize his supremacy and his authority and his lordship over your life? See, he's the only one that can turn your circumstances around. There are many people today who, who are like the servant. You know, they're not able to get to the master for help. They don't even know him. They don't know that Jesus is the solution to their circumstances. They don't know that. But you and I need to be like the centurion. We need to stand in the gap for them and go to the master for help. Amen? Amen? We can pray for them. Give our request to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's power in agreement. You may have relatives. You may have friends. Maybe loved ones. And they need help. And they don't know that Jesus is their answer. They don't know that Jesus is the solution to their situation. Now they may be sick in their body. But far worse is that they may be sick in their soul. Meaning, they have a disease called sin. And that disease will bring them eternally separated from God. And so, they need to be healed of that. And you and I can be like that centurion. To lift up our friends and family and relatives. And lift them up to God. 
Bring them to Jesus who can restore them, who can heal them, who can deliver them and save them. Amen? Amen. Are you still with me? Yes, yes I, I, I feel like you got sad. <laughs> All right. yeah, he, he can deliver your friends and family. Amen? Especially in this season that they need to know why Jesus came as we're coming into this uh, next month and this new season that we're going to see that God has come for them. And we need to stand in the gap. We can pray. He's willing to heal them. You know, especially he can heal their pain and their suffering. So let's have faith in Jesus to overcome. Here's another principle. Know the authority of the word. See, the, the centurion knew the power and the authority of the word of God. Yeah. Jesus speaks and the storm, uh, he speaks to the storm and he brings peace. He can calm the storm just by speaking. He can speak and bring life to something that is dead. He speaks to the things that are not as though they were. You don't see it yet, but he can speak it into existence. <laughs> Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was with God in the beginning. So friend, the Lord, Jesus was already there from the very beginning. You know, He spoke creation into existence. I mean, I'm trying to paint you this picture so that you can see how powerful Jesus is. The one who saved us. The one that we're following. The one that we, we are, uh, are loving and following in our life. There's power in his word. And friends, the Bible is the word of God. Amen? Amen. The Bible is the word of God. Jesus still speaks through his word. <laughs> He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He didn't change. Yeah. If he healed then, he heals today. If he provides then, he provides today. And we still have his word. <laughs> the centurion was humbled by the presence or the response of Jesus. That he was actually willing to go to his house and heal his servant. The great physician, the king of kings, and the lord of lords was willing to go out of his way to heal a servant. Now he felt so unworthy for the master to enter his house. You know, like he said, I, I'm not worthy that you would come into my house. You see, but isn't that the way we all are? We are all unworthy in the presence of a holy God. You know, no matter how you might feel, how good you are, you may feel like I'm righteous, I'm doing the right things, I'm, I'm a good person. No matter how much righteousness and how much you feel good about yourself, we are just filthy rags in the presence of a holy God. He is holy. All right, he, he, he is God and just like, you know, how Isaiah felt when he was in the presence of God. He said, I'm, I'm a man with unclean lips. <laughs> you know, I'm undone in the presence of God. This is where I see my weaknesses. This is where I see my sin in the presence of God. You know, we were singing just this afternoon about, you know, the time that, you know, just entering into the presence of the Lord. That, you know, we want to be in his presence. To be here with him. And I want you to know today that Jesus Christ wants us to enter into his presence of who he is. The Bible tells us in Romans 5, 6 to 8. You see, at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man. Man. Though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. <laughs> but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. 
While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Friends, what a powerful statement that Jesus didn't wait for us to be righteous. He didn't wait for us to be good before he died for us. I mean, he, he, it's saying in the passage that, you know, um, maybe somebody could die for a, a good person. That's fine. But imagine dying for, for a bad person. <laughs> imagine dying for the ungodly. And that's exactly what Jesus has done for us. He has come and those of us, I mean, we, we, we were still living in our sin. He didn't wait for us to get better, to become righteous before he died for us. That's why I always say, you, 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 there's nothing you and I can do that may, will make Jesus love you more. Because while you were a sinner, he already died for you. Amen. <laughs> and so he died for us now. Because of what Jesus has done, we are worthy. We can now enter into his presence. We are now God's house. And here one thing is for sure. The centurion knew who Jesus was. And he knew the authority of his word. Friends, that's so important for us to understand. He didn't need to be convinced. He knew from his own experience that a man of his position can give commands and they are done. You know, if you think about it, he, he was a man who, who had authority. He knew what authority was like. I mean, he had people under him that he could command and he could say, go and they will go. He said, come and they will come. He knew that. He, he's saying, I understand authority. My words cause action because of my word. And you, you know, just as the soldiers obey the centurion because he is backed by the Roman Empire. It's not because of who he is, it's because of who he stands for. And so this centurion can command his people, a hundred of them, he could command them, go do this, go do that. They'll all follow. Why? Because behind him is the Roman Empire. <laughs> He stands by that authority that people would obey him. And so he knew that. He knew that Jesus would have more authority. Now if he had authority, he said, how much more from the authority who is the highest authority? <laughs> you know, so he's saying, I could command people and they'll do this. How much more if it comes from the highest authority because Jesus is backed by the kingdom of God. <laughs> Amen. Therefore he says, just say the word <laughs> and my servant will be healed. I know, I know the power of your word. I know the authority that you carry. That when you say that word, it's going to get done. That's how powerful it is. Friends, I want you to know, just like the centurion, we need to trust the word of God in our lives. Amen? You know, say that with me. I will trust the word of God. You can type it in the chat. I will trust the word of God. We need to trust it. See, like the centurion, we need to do that. There's power in the word of God. It's not, this is not just a book. Or if you're looking at a digital one, it's not just on your cell phone. You know, this is more powerful. This is, this is a powerful word of God. Now, I'm not going to get into all of the, uh, you know, all of the evidence of why this is an inspirational, uh, why this is the inspired of God, why this book is, is more than just a regular book. But I'm going to share you, to you a passage of scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. Let's read it. Here's what it says. All scripture is God breathed. And is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So friends, all scripture is God breathed. The Lord breathed life into this. It's the inspired word of God. So I, I encourage you. Use the word of God. And speak the word into your situation. It's powerful. 
declare his promises into your life. Because it's his word. Declare the promises of God into your life. When I lack, he is my provider. When I am sick, he is my healer. When I'm anxious, he's my peace. When I am down, he's the lifter of my head. Hallelujah. You know, when I am bound, he's my deliverer. When I am lost, he is my redeemer. Praise God. Amen. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. We can declare the promises of God. Whatever your situation is, speak the word of God into your situation. Let his word do the work. This power and authority that comes through his word. And finally, believe and act. Another principle, believe and act. The centurion believed and acted upon the word of God. Jesus said, the centurion demonstrated such great faith that not anyone uh, had in Israel. Nobody in Israel had that kind of faith. Now, what is great faith? First of all, let's define what faith is. Now, faith, according to um, Hebrews 11.1, 1, here's what faith, the definition of faith is. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. So in other words, you already have the assurance of something that you're hoping for. You're hoping for something. You have the assurance and not only an assurance, but you have the conviction even though you have not seen it yet. Yeah. It's like you, you know that you know it's there, but you haven't seen it yet. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's the kind of, uh, that's what faith is. You know, um, that you're able to, to believe God for something that you have not seen. And in another translation, it says faith is the substance of things hoped for, meaning a substance that there is, uh, it's tangible, right? It's a substance of things that you're hoping for, but the evidence is not yet seen. Yeah. That's faith. Because if you can see it, that that's not faith. <laughs> see, Friends, he had great faith because he was believing that Jesus' words have greater authority than the physical facts. That his word is more powerful than the facts. Now, you see, I, I, I say this. Faith does not deny the fact. It changes the fact. So you're not denying that you're sick. You know, you, know, you don't just say, hey, you know, I'm, people say, oh, are you sick? No, 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 I'm not sick. I'm okay. Hallelujah. No, no. <laughs> you're sick, okay? <laughs> no. So you don't deny, the, you deny that, but faith changes that. Yeah. Are you hearing me? All right? So you, faith can change the facts that you see in your life. Right? So... We need to believe that God could change our situation. Whatever you're going through, God can change your situation. You don't deny that. You don't deny that you're sick. You don't deny that, you know, maybe you're going through a problem in your life. You don't deny that, but God can change it. Amen. Yes, give him praise. Hallelujah. So, he believed that, that the words of Jesus could has greater authority over the facts. Now, here's what happens. People uh, would normally, normally people would go to, you know, in Israel, people would go to hot spots uh, to get healing or they would go to a, to a holy person to get healed. So normally they would go to Jesus to get healed. People would flock him and, and they would go to Jesus to get healed. That was normal. But long distance healing... Is extraordinary. You need special faith for that. And so this, great, this centurion, he believed that Jesus could heal remotely. Wow, he was ahead of his time. <laughs> that Jesus could heal in a long distance. And people would normally go to him, but this time he's like, 
You know, and that's why Jesus says, there's no one like this in Israel. This kind of faith. That's great faith. The centurion's faith is great that he believed Jesus can heal even though it's a long distance. He didn't need to see Jesus to go to his house to heal his servant. He didn't need to do that. He just said, just speak the word. And that authority will carry over beyond space and time to do what it's supposed to do. That's what he, he believed. See, friends, God said to the prophet Isaiah, he said to the prophet Isaiah that, you know, when the rain, you know, the rain and the, and the snow, right? The rain and the snow, when they come from heaven, they would come to earth and it will not return. This rain and snow will not return to heaven without accomplishing what it's supposed to do. And that is to water the earth so that the flowers will bud and that the seed will grow to bring harvest to the sower. And so then he says in verse 11, and Isaiah 55, uh, is a verse 11. And so just like that, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will also not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Hallelujah. That's why, that's what God is saying. That whatever I have spoken, just like what you see, that these things happen, they will not return without accomplishing it. The same with my word. The word that I have spoken, it will not return to me void and empty, but it will accomplish the purpose for which I sent it. So believing that the word of God will not return void, but will accomplish its purpose. When he says it, we receive it and it's done. Amen. Jesus said, it will be done just as you believed. Now, when he says believed, it's past tense. All right. So believed is past tense. It's, and then he says, and will be done. It's future tense. So the believing is past tense. And what's going to happen will be done in the future. So in other words, you first must believe, then it will be done. You must believe it's done before it's done. <laughs> That's faith, okay? You must believe that. The problem with us, and I know I, I have the same, uh, the same issue and the same problem. Sometimes we, we, we uh, lack faith and, uh, you know, we get tempted to doubt and these things happen to us and uh, our problem is we are the opposite. Show me first, then I will believe. <laughs> right? Show me first. You know, I, then I'll believe you. To see is to believe is what we say. To see is to believe. We always want to see it first, then I will believe. Lord, you know, show me first, then, then I'll believe you. Show me that you can provide. Then I'll believe you. You know, it's like saying to the farmer, you know, the, the, the farmer saying, give me harvest, then I'll plant a seed. <laughs> now, I know that's crazy, but that's the way it is. That's the way we think. It's like, show me the harvest first, then I'll plant a seed. But you see, the farmer knows that you got to believe first. And so the farmer says, I'm going to plant the seed. I'm going to believe there's going to be a harvest. So even though I don't see anything, even though it could go a long time, nothing is happening, but I'm believing that there will be a harvest. Are you hearing me today? And, and that's what the farmer does. He, he believes it's going to be done. So he's okay. He doesn't lose sleep. He just goes about doing his thing because he knows it's going to come up and he's going to have a harvest. He's already done his part. He just, he just believes and he acts on it and he's not worried about it. He's not stressed about it. Everything is fine. Right? But you see, 
That's believing. You know, so you can't have a, a, a farmer say, well, no, I'm, I'm going to, you know, believe first. Uh, I'm going to uh, see the harvest first, then I will, I will plant. It doesn't work that way. It, you know, God wants us to believe his word. Then he will make it come to pass in our life. Amen? <laughs> That's amazing of how God works in our lives. And many times we're, we're thinking, you know, I, I've got to see things first. And, and so if it's not happening, you know, we, we, we kind of, you know, uh, stay uh, depressed and, and anxious and wondering, oh, God, you know, we're, it's not going to happen. And, oh, poor me, it must be the COVID. It's this and it's, you know, it's the government. It's the government's fault. It's everybody's fault. But you see, instead of doing that, we need to believe and trust God that God is doing something. Amen? In our life. So we need to believe and trust the Lord. I remember when I had a big problem. Um, I know I'm the only one who has big problems. So you guys never have a problem, you know. <laughs> but I had a big problem. Uh, one time, one of the problems, I mean, there's many, many big problems I have, but um, I, I had a big problem to overcome. Uh, if you know our building in, uh, in uh, Brampton, our main church, for those of you that are visiting us here in Scarborough, uh, this is not our building. We're renting this from, from this wonderful church. Uh, but we, we have our own building in Brampton. And I remember uh, when we bought that building, we had already bought it for four and a half million dollars at that time. Uh, we really didn't have money, but God led us to do that. Then the city said, we cannot have a church in that place, all right, in this area. Because they changed the laws that you can't have a church in that zoning. It's not zoned for a church. It was more of a commercial industrial area. So we don't have a permit and we're not rezoned for place of worship. And so another church I knew right near us sold their building because of that problem. They, they just sold it. They said, this is it, you know. And, and there was so much pressure from the city, from members, from people. And so uh, they sold their building. And, um, you know, I, I was having a lot of problems because there were people also, a lot of voices telling me things and, um, you know, I, and I felt at that time, uh, you know, th there was so much uh, issues and some people even left our church at that time, you know, and because they felt that we made a mistake, you know, it's no good. We will never get a permit here. And so they left and, and I was hearing so many voices and even advice uh, from some uh, godly people. They told me, you know, you, 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 you've got to sell the building just, just so that you can at least get some money out of it. Otherwise, you're going to lose money. So, you know, go and sell the building. And, and I went to God and I remember going to God and I wanted to see the permit <laughs> to believe that God was on our side. And I said, Lord, just show me the permit. <laughs> Give, give us a permit that, you know, you, you, you told us this is, this is the place and we've gone and gone all, uh, done this and, and now we don't have a permit and we, we may lose the building. And I said, God, show me the permit. <laughs> and, you know, I wanted to see, to believe. <laughs> and God says, no, you, you have to believe. I have to trust God. You just believe. And so I gathered the leadership, my wife and I. Uh, you know, when I wasn't believing in myself, my wife was believing in me. Praise God. Hallelujah, Mama E. Praise God. So she believes in you. You know. So anyway, she, she believed in me. We, we had our leadership gathered together and we prayed and we trusted God. We believed God. And so after we believed and we trusted God, we left it alone. We, we, that's it. We, we felt like, okay, that's it. We prayed, we believed it, and we received it, and now God's, uh, is now under God. And so we just went about doing our normal life. You know, we just kept going, and, we, you know, any time uh, we could lose the building, but we didn't think that way anymore. We believed, we prayed, 
we have faith and we are going to receive it. And so we just kept going and going, doing our ministry, doing all the things we need to do. And that was pre-pandemic. So we, we were, they had a lot of activities in the church. We were doing so many things. And so we just kept going. And then sure enough, God miraculously touched the hearts of the city officials and, and changed their hearts that today... You know, we got a permit and they did a separate bylaw just for our building. Can you imagine that? Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Imagine a separate bylaw. They had to make a law for our building <laughs> to be able to, to continue in as a place of worship. That's amazing. That's how God works. But it took some time. We, we didn't know what was going to happen. And there were all, all kinds of issues. And just because you have issues doesn't mean God's not going to do it. Sometimes he's testing us. And just because you're seeing some rough road doesn't mean that God will not fulfill his promise in your life. So I want to encourage you. See, Mark eleven twenty four 24 says this. Therefore, I tell you, Jesus said... Whatever you ask for. Say whatever. whatever. Okay, so whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have what? Received it and it will be yours. Now, received it meaning you believe it's already done. You already have it. But you don't have it yet. But he said it will be yours down the road. But you've already believed it in your heart. You already received it in your heart. You know this is what God had called you. This is what God has promised in your life. To have great faith is believing that the word of God is applicable in every situation in our life. The word of God is alive and will bring life to what is dying. It will, you know, we were singing about that. Meaning, you know, bringing life to the dead bones. It will bring life to a discouraged soul. When the word of God is spoken, it has the power to make things happen. When God spoke the word, let there be light, there was light. Believing also involves action. You must act upon what you believe just as we believed and it was okay. And that was it. We, we believed it and it was done. And we were living life as normal. We were not anxious about it. We weren't worried anymore because we knew that God was going to do something about it. Now, I want to encourage you. You know, when you're believing and you're acting upon it, don't go in, you know, you, you prayed and you go, Oh, I don't know. You know, I hope so. I don't think it'll ever be done. And after you've just prayed and now you're believing the opposite. And then people ask you, how are you? Not too bad. No, oh, it's bad, but it's not too bad. <laughs> right? and, and, you know, oh, I have nothing. Oh, I got no job. Or I got no this. And I got this problem and that problem. And all kinds of, and yet you prayed and believed God. You need to act. And even though, listen, you know, I'm not saying you're faking it or anything. I'm just saying you have the conviction. It's just the confidence that you have. I'm not saying you're, you're faking. I'm saying you have the conviction you believe. So, you know, maybe you don't have a job and you're already believing God. You prayed and God said to you, I'm going to be your provider. You know, because I know that you, you work hard. You trust in me. I'm going to give you the job that is suited for you. And so here you are. You know, you don't have a job. But you should be walking like, you know, you have a job. Amen. People ask you, how are you? I am blessed. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, you have a job. It's coming. Amen. <laughs> it's coming. It's on the way. Right? Because you're believing God. I, I'm not saying you're denying the fact. I'm just saying you're trusting God. You, you haven't seen it yet, but you have the conviction of something you haven't seen. Amen. And that's faith. And you need to act on it. That's why Jesus said, go. It will be done just as you believe it would. If you believed it, he said, it's done for you. According to your faith, it's done to you. See, friends, after you receive the word and believed it, then just act upon it. Just go. Knowing that God 
has already done it. Amen? You must take possession of what is already yours. And I want to encourage you, whatever you are going through, as I mentioned to you a while ago, there are times where you don't see anything happening yet. You may feel like giving up already and losing trust in the Word of God. I want to encourage you, don't lose hope. Continue on. Because God is not a man that He should lie. He is, His promises are yes and amen. It's true. He, whatever He said, it will be done. It shall come to pass. If he has promised that to you, and if it says it in his word, and that's, you can declare it in your life, if you know that God has spoken to you about that, he will bring it to pass. And I want to stand with you in agreement to believe God with you, that it will be done for you. Maybe you're waiting for, for uh, the papers, you know. Uh, you, you feel like, oh, I need the papers to be here, or, you know, as a student, or as an immigrant, or maybe uh, you needed this, this employment that you need. And friend, you may be going through some difficult things in your life, even those of you watching online. But I want you to know that when you believe God and He's spoken into your life, even though you will see all the different circumstances around you, you can still overcome because of who Jesus is in your life. Amen? Give Him praise. Don't let the circumstances overwhelm you. When you have faith, you can overcome. Jesus' words spoken and believed in destroyed the paralysis and healed the man's servant. There is no distance with God. He's no respecter of place and people. And His promises are true. No matter how difficult our circumstances may be, whether physical or otherwise, we can overcome our circumstances when we recognize who Jesus is, we know the authority of His Word, and we believe and act upon it. Amen? Amen. You received that today? Amen. Praise God. Come on, give Him praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, let me pray for you today. You may be going through. Those of you that are watching online, I want to pray with you. Uh, but before I can uh, pray with you, I want you to know that you need to recognize who Jesus is in your life. We need to ask forgiveness from God if we have somehow put him in the back burner or just put him on the side. And we try to do things on our own. We need to repent of that. That we recognize who Jesus is, that he is the Lord of our life. That it is the so He is the source of everything. Without Him, we can do nothing. We need to recognize that. Because sometimes we, we go through on our own life as if Jesus didn't exist. So we need to recognize and ask forgiveness uh, in our life. And then we, we can bring to God, bring to Him all of those things that, we've, that, that, that we are praying for. And I will stand in agreement with you because there's power in agreement. So we're going to pray together. Let us bow our heads before the Lord. Those of you joining us online, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we just thank you for your word today that have encouraged us that we need to have faith to overcome. Lord, we repent of our sin, of faithlessness. Help us, oh God, that Lord, we, we, we ask you to cleanse us and, and Lord, we for, uh, forgive us of, of our a lack, oh God, that we don't recognize who you are in our lives. Forgive us if we've tried to do things on our own. And so today, Lord, we recognize who you are, that you are the source of everything. And without you, we can do nothing in our life. And so we recognize that you are the Lord and Savior of our life. And so today, oh God, I pray for those who are going through challenges. They're going through difficulties. Some of them don't have jobs. Some of them are looking for uh, Lord, their papers uh, in, in, uh, that need to be uh, expedited, oh God. Lord, I, I, some of us, Lord, are, are going through sickness and need healing. 
We, 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 we have people who are relatives who are not here. They may be somewhere else. Oh God, we're standing in the gap for them to heal them, deliver them, save them, oh God, today. And Lord, I pray that God, you would increase our faith. That we will continue to believe you and to stand on your word. That we will not waver in our faith. That we will continue to stand on the promises that you have given us. Regardless of the circumstances. And God that we will not lose hope. And that Lord we will know the authority of your word. That we will believe in it. And we will act upon it. And so Lord we commit all this prayer to you. And we give you all the glory and all the praise. And we know that we have already received it in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Let's give praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, before we close today, we have uh, something very important that we do as a family of God. And uh, as a family of God, it's always a joy when new people become members of our family. You know, because uh, the church is a family of God. We're not an institution or an organization. We're a family of God. And when people join us to become a part of our family, we, we are blessed and we want to recognize them. And by the way, if you have not yet uh, become a part of our family, you've not become a member of our church yet, you can do so. Let, let your leader know or let us know so that we'll take you to the process. So there are these people who have uh, decided to become part of, of the, uh, the Champion Life Center Scarborough family. And we want to recognize them today. So we want to call them so that you will meet them. Now, I'm sure you've seen them before, but we want to officially recognize them. They have gone through the process of becoming a part of our family. And so we want to recognize them. All right. So as we call you, can you please come here and so that people can see you? All right. So uh, one is Ryan Daniel Escuban. Ryan. Wow. Ryan, there's Ryan. Wow, Ryan, Ryan, you have a lot of fans. All right, so okay. Uh, then we have Steffi Dico. Steffi, Steffi. Oh, there you are. All right, so now you can see a face to the name, right? All right. So then we have Christina Alano and John Michael Alano. Oh, there they are. And their family. Wow, there you go. Okay, so there's Christine and, uh, and John Michael. All right, so now you see who they are. You know who to treat. Okay, now I'm just... All right, so... But anyway, well, can you turn to me now? Just I want to just speak to you for a moment. All right, so we want you to know that uh, we, we welcome you at Champion Life Center family. Thank you for choosing uh, this... Uh, uh, church to be your home church and uh, you know whether you like it or not we're now part of your family all of these people <laughs> we're now part of your family and you know, what that means is that you don't have to face your problems alone there's a whole family out here who want to pray for you lift you up encourage you and and uh, support you um, so if there's anything uh, that you need make sure let the family know we're here for you and we're going to be praying you through whatever situation you're going through amen all right and discover the gift that God has given you to serve him okay and so let's pray for them all right so can you just stretch your hands to them all right so we're going to pray for this uh, families that are here father in the name of Jesus we thank you for all these people who have decided to become part of the Champion Life family. And God, I pray that you would uh, continue to uh, raise them up to be true sons and daughters in the house, that they will mature in their walk with you. I pray, God, that you would uh, protect them in their life, in their going out, in their coming in. And Lord God, they're sleeping, they're waking, that you'll watch over them. And God, I pray that you would provide for all their needs. 
Lord, and protect them, even their income, protect their health. And Lord, I pray that you bless their families, oh God, as they are serving you. God, may they discover the gift that you have given them, that they can serve you, oh God. And so, Lord, we as a congregation rejoice with them, and we lift them up to you. And God, we thank you for their lives, and we give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's congratulate them. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. There you are. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. What an exciting time. Amen. Those of you that are watching us, you know, I would encourage you, uh, you know, there are still some more seats available. You probably thought that there's not enough room. There's still a lot more room. You can come and join us. All right. If you have been watching us for a long time and if you're just in the area, why not come and be part of the worship here in the family of God? Amen. All right, and so uh, let's all stand. Uh, we're going to dismiss with the blessing of the Lord. All right, and those of you watching us online, you can also uh, receive the blessing. Stretch your hands to heaven and receive the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine His face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance on you and give you His peace. May He cause you to walk under an open heaven. May He cause you to prosper in every area of your life, even as your soul prospers. He opened doors of opportunities for you that you can enter in and be victorious for God. May he continue to fill you with his love, grace, and the power of his spirit throughout this week and until he comes. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Wow, our family is really growing. So to our new family members, Steffi, Jan, Tin, and Ryan, we just invite you to please go to the uh, room on your right as you exit. And our pastors and leaders will meet and greet you, okay? And Amen. Yeah, welcome to CLC family. And we hope and we're excited to really walk and grow with you. Thank you.